Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to In User Education. Um, let's talk about certain trigonometric um, equalities. Um, right now, I think it's very important to start with something relatively simple because we are going to use whatever I'm presenting today in, uh, in, in subsequent lectures to derive some more sophisticated trigonometric identities, equalities, etc. So, today we will talk about cosine of a double angle. I would like to express this cosine of a double angle um, in terms of cosine or sine of a single angle. So, what happens with the angle, actually with trigonometric function, uh, cosine of this angle, if I double the angle? Well, let's start from a simple picture. I'll derive some formula, and then I will criticize it. So, for instance, this is our angle phi, and this is another phi. So, angle AOC is 2 phi, exactly what we need. So, my question is how to express the cosine. Okay, now let's connect C and A and consider a triangle AOC. This triangle. Now, OB is a bisector of this angle because that's how we constructed it. Now, the triangle is obviously um, isosceles because this is the radius and this is the radius and both radiuses are equal to 1 because this is a unit circle. The usual tool we are using with, with, with trigonometric identities. So, um, as is well known, OB is uh, perpendicular to AC and also if this is a point M it's the midpoint of AC which means AM equals to MC now all these properties are relatively simple geometric properties of, uh, of a circle and a chord and a perpendicular to a chord I will use this. So, now, I will use another thing. I will use the distance between two points on the coordinate plane. Now, what's this point coordinates? Obviously, it's 1, 0, right? Because the abscissa is equal to 1. That's the radius. And coordinate, this is the y, this is the y axis, and this is the x axis. Uh, so, the coordinate is obviously 1. Uh, zero, sorry. Now, how about C? Well, we know that by definition of a cosine and by definition of a sine, if this angle is 2 phi, then C has coordinates cosine 2 phi and sine 2 phi. This is by definition of the cosine and the sine, right? So whenever this is an angle, this is the point which corresponds to the angle then its coordinate is sine and its abscissa is cosine. So I know the coordinates of this and I know the coordinates of this and that's why I can find this distance. On another hand, from a right triangle OMA I can find AM because I know the hypotenuse and then and I know the angle. So AM is half of this. So by doubling this and equating this to this length, which I calculate based on the coordinates, I will have some equation which will help me to connect cosine of 2 phi and um, some trigonometric function of, this, uh, of the single angle phi. So let's do this. This is the plan, basically. So from this triangle OMA, I know that AM equals 2. Well, 
let's think about this is the right triangle. In the right triangle, we know that uh, sine is a ratio of opposite catheters to hypotenuse, and cosine is the ratio of adjacent catheters to uh, hypotenuse. Now, the opposite to angle phi is AM. So AM relative to the hypotenuse, which is equal to 1, equal to sine, right? So AM ratio to 1, which is a hypotenuse, is a sine of phi. That's why AM is basically equal to sine phi, which means that AC is equal to 2 sine of phi. And the square of a distance, AC squared, from this point to this point, according to this, is just 4 sine squared phi. So again, sine squared phi means sine phi, parenthesis, uh, power of 2. Now, on another hand, square of a distance from one point to another, according to the formula for well, square of distance between one point and another on the coordinate plane is, so AC square equals the distance between um, X coordinate square plus the distance between Y coordinate square. I hope you remember it. If you don't, you can refer to the lecture about coordinates in the mass concepts. And that's where you will uh, see the derivation of this formula. So again, distance um, on the x-axis, which is cosine 2 phi minus 1, right? This is cosine 2 phi. This is the x-coordinate. And x-coordinate of this is 1. So the distance square plus uh, the distance between uh, y coordinates square between sine phi uh, 2 phi uh, uh, and, and 0. So it's just sine square 2 phi. And these are equal. And that's the basically the, uh, uh, the equation which uh, which will help me to, to define cosine of 2 phi. And here is a very simple thing. If I will open the parentheses, I will see that this is cosine square of 2 phi minus 2 cosine 2 phi times 1 plus 1 and plus sine square 2 phi, this one. Now, there is a fundamental trigonometric identity that uh, sine square plus cosine square of the same angle equals to 1, right? So this is this is 1 and this is 1, so it's 2. So it's 2 times 1 minus cosine 2 phi. So that's very convenient. Now we have almost established whatever we wanted to. So we have One and we have another, and they are equal to each other. Almost done. Obviously, we have to reduce by two, so I will have two sine square phi equals to 1 minus cosine 2 phi. So the cosine 2 phi equals to 1 minus 2 sine square phi. So this is the formula I wanted to derive. The cosine of a double angle equals to 1 minus 2 sine square of a single angle. Now, I have derived this formula using this particular drawing. Well, um, that's not really a very rigorous way to, 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 to derive this formula for any angle. Obviously, 
This is true if I can draw this triangle, I can draw the perpendicular, etc. So, there are some cases when it's not really easy to do. So, this case really encompasses all the cases when my angle phi is in the first quadrant, from 0 to pi over 2. Then my 2 phi would be from 0 to 2 pi. And these are strict less than signs, not equal. Because if, for instance, phi is equal to 0, there is angle 0, double, it will be also 0, so I can't really draw any triangle. I cannot rely on this particular way of proving the things uh, in case phi is equal to 0. Um, now, same thing for phi, phi is equal to pi over 2, because if, if phi is pi over 2, 2 phi is pi. So again, these three points do not form a triangle. And I'm not even talking about something greater than uh, pi over 2, because then my double angle will be somewhere here, and triangle will be completely in a different place. I mean, it, there are some problems with this, with this proof. That's what I wanted to, uh, to talk about and to pay, uh, you to pay attention to. So, what I would like to do is to make it a little bit more rigorous. Now, how can I make it? First of all, I think all these extreme cases, when my three points, O, A, and C, are lying on the same, um, are lying on the same line, so I cannot really draw any triangles. Which means, for phi is equal to 0, pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2, I have to really prove this separately. Now, how can I prove it? Well, the easiest way, considering I know the angle, just substitute it. Now, let me just, for, uh, as an example, actually, let's take pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1. Remember? This is the graph of the sine. So this is 0, this is pi over 2, this is pi. So, Sine is equal to 1, which means the right side is 1 minus 2, which is minus 1. Now, the cosine of 2 pi, now 2 pi now is 2 times pi over 2, which is pi. Now, the cosine is this. So, this is 0, this is pi over 2, this is pi. So it's minus 1. So the cosine of pi is equal to minus 1. And here we also got minus 1. So that's it. That, that is a sufficient checking for the formula in case phi is equal to pi over 2. Now, I'm not going to check for all these four points. I did put in notes for this lecture on unizor.com um, real verification, and you will see that this is actually true. So all these cases are covered by uh, explicitly checking. OK, that's done. Next. Well, now we can say this, right? No problems with this. Now, let's move with a phi beyond pi over 2. Well, if phi is somewhere here, let me check. Let me get another column. OK. If this is phi, so this is point B. And my point C would be somewhere here. This is a phi, and this is a phi. So this is 2 phi. Now, in this case, 
which I mark as phi from pi over 2 to pi. Now, in this case, I can always say that this angle, which is pi minus phi, does belong to this particular interval. So, if phi is in the second quadrant, then pi minus phi is an acute angle, and it belongs to the first quadrant. So, if I will use this as a new angle, I um, use the letter chi for this case, then for letter chi, which is uh, a, a, an angle in the first quadrant, I know that my theorem is true. So, I can actually write that cosine of 2 chi is equal to 1 minus 2 sine square of chi. Because I have actually proven this particular theorem for angle in the first quadrant. Okay. Now, let's check what chi actually is. So it's cosine 2 uh, pi minus 2 phi, right? 2 times chi is 2 pi minus 2 phi equals 1 minus 2 sine square of phi minus phi, because that's the value of chi. Now, let's change the left part. Now, 2 pi is a period for a cosine, so I can actually drop this. Now, Cosine is an even function, which means if you change the sign of the argument, it does not change the value of the function. So this minus actually is also not needed. So I have actually 2 phi here. Now here, sine of pi minus phi, remember, sine of pi minus phi, it's this angle. Sine is ordinate, right? Ordinate of this and ordinate of symmetrical this ordinate, they are the same. So, sine of pi minus phi is equal to sine of phi. Um, I did pay attention to this identity in the previous lectures. So, I can actually, instead of pi minus phi, put phi. So, using this intermediary angle, chi, and the properties of, uh, like, evenness of the function cosine, and the fact that the pi minus phi sine is exactly the same, using this and these properties, I have proven this formula for phi even in the second quadrant. Okay. Is this everything. No, not yet, because we still have third and fourth quadrant. But here is, again, a, a, a little logic which, which helps to prove it in these cases as well. Now, whenever this, the, the angle is in the third or the fourth uh, quadrant, I can always represent exactly the same angle with a negative sign, right? So instead of going this way, I can go this way. Now, this is counterclockwise, which is a positive direction of the angle. This is counter. Uh, this is clock. This is counterclockwise. This is clockwise, which is a negative direction. So, if this is a, a, a positive angle, I can use this one, which is negative. Now, for any angle in the third or the fourth quadrant, the negative part of this angle would be in the first or, or the second quadrant, right? In this case, for instance, this is the angle in the fourth quadrant, but this is the angle which is in the first quadrant just with a sign minus. And same thing for any other. So whenever my angle is in the third for the fourth quadrant, so my angle is from pi to pi to two pi. Actually, 
actually I don't need these equals because we have already proven for all the equals. Okay, when my phi is in this, I can use chi equals to minus phi. Now, in this particular case, I know that chi is negative, but it's negative and it's in the first or the second quadrant. So for the first or the second quadrant, we have we have actually proven this, right? So we know that cosine of 2 phi is equal to 1 minus 2 sine square of phi. We know that for phi in, in the first and second quadrants, it, it's true. Okay, now, what if I would change phi to minus phi? Which is actually high. So, I definitely know that if um, <coughs> uh, if I change the sign, now cosine doesn't really change. So the cosine is an even function. So it doesn't really matter what sign of my angle here, positive or negative. Sign does change the sign of uh, the function if argument changes the sign. But this is a square, which means we don't really care whether it's plus or minus. Square will always result in the plus. So, again, in this case, using the negative angles, we have also proven. So, basically now we can, we can say that we have covered all the different cases. We covered all the, four, all, 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 yes, all the four quadrants, and we covered the basic angles, 0 pi over 2 pi and 3 pi over 2, because in these cases we cannot really build a triangle. That completes, that completes the proof of this particular formula. And um, there is one more little detail. So let me just wipe this so you will have a clean view. Let me rewrite this formula again. So the cosine of 2 phi equals 1 minus 2 sine square phi. Now, I also know that sine square phi plus cosine square phi is equal to 1, right? Now, using this identity, I can substitute instead of sine square, I can put 1 minus cosine square. And that gives me cosine to phi equals 1 minus 2, 1 minus cosine square of phi, which is equal to 2 cosine square phi minus 1. So, not only we can express the cosine of 2 phi in terms of sine phi, but also in terms of cosine phi. On another hand, I can replace this one with a sine square plus cosine square, and I will have the next representation equals. This is sine plus cosine and minus two sines. So it would be cosine uh, square phi minus sine square phi. So this is one, this is two, and this is three, three different incarnations, basically, of the same formula. How to express cosine in terms in ter of double angle, in terms of sine of single angle, in terms of cosine of a single angle, or in case of a mixed sine and cosine of a single angle. These are trivial consequences from the, co uh, fr from the formula which I have already proven. Well, that's it. I do recommend you to uh, to read the notes to this lecture, which basically explain in writing whatever I was just talking about. Um, by the way, in general, I think it's very, very useful for you personally to write down with your own hand or, or on your own computer type in um, logical statements, which really um, clearly demonstrate that you are in command of this logic. Now, in this case, Proof, for instance, uh, if you can really put in writing um, everything uh, which you are 
actually leveraging as, as your logic, which proves this particular theorem or any other theorem, it's an extremely useful exercise, and I do suggest them to use it a lot. That develops your your concentration, your your logic, your your creativity. That's it. Thank you very much, and good luck.